Brian Young has more. Georgia is energized. I think this is a really critical election. As the balance of power in Congress and some key state level positions are being decided in these midterm elections. This is going to be a close race, uh, you know, two big races, uh, uh, you know, the Senate and the governor's race. And I, I want to make sure my vote is counted. Turnout for the first day of early voting here in Georgia nearly doubled that of 2018's midterm elections, setting a new state record, according to state election officials. It was very busy and it's very encouraging that people are taking the uh, opportunity to vote so that we won't have any nonsense about votes not being counted properly. More than 131,000 Georgians cast their vote on Monday. These numbers almost as large as the state's first day of early voting turnout in the 2020 presidential election, according to Georgia's Secretary of State. We need a governor who believes in access to the right to vote right. and not in voter suppression, which is the hallmark of Brian Kemp's leadership. For someone to say that we have been suppressive in our state when we've seen turnout increase over the years, including with minorities like African Americans, Latinos and others, is simply not true. A major controversy ahead of these elections. Georgia Senate Bill 202, also known as the Election Integrity Act, passed in March of 2021, which many critics say restricts voters. What Brian Kemp did is a strategic surgical voter suppression law. He said Joe Biden won by 11,000 and some votes. Of those 11,000 and some votes, 7,000 of them were provisional ballots that were counted in his race. So what did Brian Kemp do? He got rid of provisional ballots on Election Day. What does the Abram campaign do then? Really push early vote turnout because Georgians can vote in any location during early vote. Georgia election officials disagree. The main thing is, it's kind of hard to say you're suppressing the vote and seeing record turnout. We want to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. The bill expanded early voting access for many counties, including an additional mandatory Saturday and extended voting hours. Potential issues resulting from some of the bill's other changes, such as time constraints for when one can apply for an absentee ballot and the deadlines for when ballots must be counted, won't be known until we get closer to November 8th. For now, many passionate about the issues at hand aren't waiting until Election Day to cast their vote here in Georgia. Voting in person seems like it's important. I've, I felt like 2020 was a nightmare in terms of like worrying that somehow my vote would be invalidated given the politics about, about Fulton County votes in particular. This is Georgia's first major election since the enactment of the new voting law, which was passed last year. We'll go to Leesburg now, where a man has been arrested on charges involving child sexual exploitation. South Georgia Television News reporter Mary Alex Anders has more. Yes, after receiving an anonymous tip from the National Center of Missing or Exploited Children, a two-week investigation led Lee County Special Victims Unit to arrest 46-year-old Palmer James Kelly on three counts of exploitation of a child. When we received the tips from the National Center for Missing or Exploited Children, uh, we, you know, see what's there. We have to personally watch the images or look at whatever they're saying is child pornography or child sexual abuse material. Once we confirm that um, it is, then we typically initiate a search warrant for the residence or a phone or what have you, whatever has the information on there. And as a result, uh, depending on the circumstances, an arrest can be made and which in this investigation it was. From reviewing the evidence, Detective Danny Alday says multiple children are involved and identifying each of them is crucial. So during this um, type of investigation, we work to identify the victim. Um, we work to make sure they are safe and um, work with other law enforcement agencies to ensure that. And also, um, a lot of times, when we identify victims, we identify others that may be exploiting them. So it's, it's a large um, investigation that uh, with numerous law enforcement agencies being involved. While their ages are unknown, in Georgia, anyone of or under 18 is considered a child in image or movie exploitation. Child sexual abuse and exploitation is more common than people think. And All Day has a message for all parents. We would encourage parents to just be uh, mindful that, you know, children make mistakes. That's part of being a child. Um, and if they come across anything that would uh, be, you know, worrisome for a parent, contact our office. We want uh, any child in that situation to know they're not in trouble. We want them to understand that we do this all the time and to find a trusted adult, someone that they feel comfortable talking to. 
If you have any information on this case, any case, or if you are a victim, please call the Lee County Sheriff's Office or to remain anonymous, you can visit the NMEC website. Both are listed on your screen. Because Local Matters in Leesburg, I'm Mary Alexander, South Georgia Television News. Next to Cordell, where two suspects believed to be shoplifting from Walmart are arrested on a host of charges after one is allegedly caught red-handed. Cordell police say 31-year-old Christopher Vest of Camilla and 40-year-old Sheena Pridmore of Dawson are in the Crisp County Jail after Vest was spotted by police pilfering items. Vest was caught after a brief chase where police discovered his getaway vehicle was reported stolen out of Doherty County. Police say they also found meth paraphernalia, meth and other paraphernalia on him. Both he and Pridmore face felony shoplifting counts and felony possession of stolen property. Vest is also facing additional theft and drug charges. If you weren't able to make it to Perry for the Georgia National Fair, not to worry as the Southwest Georgia Regional Fair returns to the Good Life City with prices that won't pinch your pocketbook. South Georgia Television News reporter Quint Quillen Parker has the details. After being away for two years now due to COVID-19, the Southwest Regional Fair is coming back. We are a nonprofit. Uh, every one of the people with the orange shirts and all our money in other than keeping up the grounds go back to local charities. Ralph Postian, vice president of the fair board at the Exchange Club, tells me that's what sets the Southwest Georgia Regional Fair apart from others. While still being able to positively impact local charities, Ralph says this year's fair will be affordable for families with inflation in mind. You know, we try to give back to the community. We've really dropped our prices and made it r very affordable to come out and enjoy yourself. And that's what we're about. We try to give back to the community. And across the country, we've seen fatalities and injuries on various roller coasters and rides, but the Exchange Club Fair says safety is their top priority. Straits has been in business for uh, 75, 80 years. They're really good about their safety. Also, the state inspector comes in, local inspector comes in, and then the Exchange Clubs has a team that we actually physically go out and they have to pass a minimum three up to four inspections prior to turning the power on and riding people on them. In addition to ride safety, Ralph says that there are new rules in place when it comes to what you can bring inside the fair. Everybody's going to the clear bags and we implemented that policy also. We do wanding at our front gate so it's very safe coming in. No guns, no knives, no fingernail clippers, none of that stuff's coming in. Postian says the fair will be a great economic impact to Albany, noting people come near and far. We're Southwest Georgia Regional Fair, so we cover the whole Southwest Georgia. We get people sometimes all the way into Florida that comes up, especially for some of our free shows. But um, the impact here, we look at a million two to a million six, a million eight uh, impact to the community. You can head to our website, SouthGATV.com, for the very latest on everything that you need to know before you head out here to the fair. Because Local Matters in Albany, I'm Quillen Parker, South Georgia Television News. Meteorologist Matthew Crumley will have your fair forecast in just a bit. Your Wednesday hometown sports report is a few minutes away also, but let's check in with sports director Reese Furlow for a quick preview. Happy Wednesday, Julie. The NBA season tips off tonight for the Atlanta Hawks, and we got your preview. And since we're in Atlanta, let's hear from the Yellow Jackets as they prepare for a Thursday night matchup against Virginia. That and more coming up in sports. Still ahead on South Georgia Television News, we'll tell you why Arkansas is so popular in Moultrie these days. And we're halfway through the annual Sunbelt Ag Expo. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes. But first, there are plenty of sunny skies ahead in meteorologist Matthew Crumley's forecast. We'll